<laughs> so we went from the lock that hated her. To now the lock just hates me and you, OG. And now we can't get in the door, so we'll just ask mom to unlock it all the time. So I did put a little lower because Miss Blur is a little shorter. So I can stoop down. Is it gonna catch me? It's not blinking. Please take a small step back. Can I find that sweet spot? I don't know if I'm gonna use the facial thing. By the time I could have just put my fingerprint on it. Let's see. So we got OG added to it now. Uh, I stopped messing with him. I didn't have it added. <laughs> he kept trying to do it. Go ahead, buddy. So it works first shot. For me. Try hates me. Look, oh, look there inside. Is. Please take a small step. Oh. There it goes. You see how, how long it takes? For you. Okay, wait. Can it really doesn't it? like you. I didn't really know exactly where to go on some of this stuff. I wanted to get more usage of this lock. I wanted to get at least like a good month or more on the usage of this thing to get a good feel. That way I could tell you if it's good or bad in the should you buy one section. I know we really haven't had any major issues with it if you want to see that already. But towards the end of the video, after I show the home assistant setup, I'll show this segment I did with all the other junk they gave and sent to us to try out. And I really couldn't try out just yet. But I'll leave all that towards the end of the video if you feel like watching that stuff. Thought I would just change stuff up and cut straight to the point because people want to do the payoff. Yes, this is a local lock for Home Assistant users or even non-Home Assistant, but you do need to get that hub if you want to use it remotely without Home Assistant. But Home Assistant users, you don't need the hub because I have it popped right into Home Assistant using Bluetooth proxies. Yes, I'll say it again. This uses Bluetooth proxies and I'll show you, I'll remove it from here and then I'll add it in here. It is encrypted. It is encrypted Bluetooth using your Bluetooth proxies or whatever else you want to get with Home Assistant Bluetooth devices. So it's pretty cool that this lock doesn't require any Z-Wave, Zigbee, anything like that at all. And you get all the controls straight in. You can see they locked it six minutes ago. I think the kids out there get all the history. I um, think it became unavailable. I hit upgrade on that. Um, shows you even if it's unlocking and lock in the process of locking. I'm not sure exactly why you would need that, but maybe if it got stuck. You also, because it does have the little magnetic sensor, I did have a few little issues with it. I've had to place it in a few different spots and try it and calibration. I think I got it finally nailed. And now it does say open, closed, etc. I've had one time that it just said open all the time and I had to go open and close the door. We really don't rely on it a whole lot because we do have a door pin up at the top, but it is cool that it does come with that built into it. Now, we also, you get the other entities. You do get battery percentage. That's the main battery pack. There is a backup battery. It will send you an email. I think if you have it configured in the app or if you have the hub, of course, if you have it cut off from the actual cloud, anything, you're not going to get those emails because they don't know about your lock. And that's some people do prefer that for locks. I totally get that. And it's a good thing. Not a bad Bluetooth signal. I'll show you in a second. I have it in a Bluetooth proxy that's somewhat by there because 
I don't have any Bluetooth adapters on my Home Assistant. I also, everything is remote using Ethernet. I think one or two Wi-Fi's, I think those are Shelly's. Now mainly I was just wanting to see, hey, is the door locked or unlocked? I love that being able to drive a lot of different automations in the home. Hey, if I'm leaving, I wanna make sure, but since this is on my shop door, that I want to make sure this door is closed and locked and it'll automatically send a lock signal to it using some automations with Home Assistant. Now, if you're not using Home Assistant, you wanna put this somewhere else, fine. Just get the uh, hub with it and pair it with the hub, puts it in the cloud and you can use it in their app. Now using the Bluetooth visualization deal in Home Assistant, it lets you see all your different and not yours, all of the different uh, Bluetooth things around the area. And I think mine's actually, there it is, Lock Ultra is right there. It's using this ESP32, as I called it, GPS. I don't think I had the GPS sensor on it because it got deprecated, but yeah, it, does pick up the thing oh look it does see i can see the pull plug as well that is the shelly one it just works with bluetooth proxy that's pretty damn slick let's go ahead and remove it and i'll show you kind of what it does so once you've gone through the entire app setup that's all the calibration that's all the door magnet stuff the open close that's all in the app it's all locally bluetooth don't worry that's not opting you any kind of cloud thing because that's you don't have it without the hub now once you do do all that, if you pop into Home Assistant and you do have Bluetooth or Bluetooth proxies, et cetera, or both, you'll get this automatic discovery of the lock. And of course, if you did have the actual integration up, it would show the same thing. Yeah, I've been playing around with like the little plug minis. If we're gonna flash them a Taz Motor or ESP Home, they do pop into Bluetooth as well, which is kind of cool with the stock firmware. Um, so yeah, I don't even have the hub plugged in right now. It's failing to set up and all this works without the hub. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit add. And then this is where you get that thing I'm talking about where Frank can't steal your password. Well, I guess he could if you wanted to um, just change it after you put this in here. So if you go ahead and hit this, this will get the encryption key. Now keep in mind, this is the SwitchBot account the one that you use on your phone to sign in with, and it'll go out and go get that encryption key for you, puts it into Home Assistant so you have that nice secure Bluetooth encryption that your neighbors can't unlock your door or whatever it may be with your SwitchBot stuff. So once you've done that, it will go out and get that key for you, it says device created, just hit, if you want the area, totally up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and skip and finish, and boom, we get the lock right there. Easy peasy, straight with, I guess, lemon squeezy on the Bluetooth proxy stuff in Home Assistant. So, of course, that leads us to, well, let's do the disclaimer. SwitchBot did send this for review, but there was no additional funds exchanged. As always, definitely keep it unbiased. So, let's roll with, would you buy one? Um, Yeah, kind of. And why I say kind of is I'll get to the keypad thing is I do prefer having something with the emergency USB-C on the outside, especially if it's your only way into the home. Um, this is not, so, um, and I guess you still get your regular lock with this, so it don't forget your keys. And so, but this is your only door, I probably would want something where the lock, you have that USB-C where you could just take a USB-C cable from the phone to the lock like you could with some of the Acarias and some of the others out there. Now I use mainly the Quickset Zigbee ones and they're fairly inexpensive. I think they're like 130 to $150 that gets you the entire lock and you can get the new key. You can do the quick key thing because it's quick set and rekey things, and then you actually get the keypad too. But with SwitchBot, yeah, you're like 140 bucks just for the actual lock itself. If you just wanted the actual keypad without the vision stuff, I, I find's kind of gimmicky, is yeah, this gives you the fingerprint and the code in the NFC, you're looking at right at $200. So keep that in mind when you start comparing some of these locks. Now. Hey, this doesn't require Zigbee, doesn't require Z-Wave, doesn't require any hubs, especially for Home Assistant users. So there's that plus right there. You probably already have Bluetooth and you can do the thing. 
Now, if you really want to get up there, you can get up there with the actual vision thing. It's $240 for the combo of those. Uh, the vision thing does just doesn't work too well for me. Um, at least for me, I don't know. The wife says it's due to the facial hair or maybe it's the lack of hair at the top. I don't know. I've tried actually fooling it with like pictures of us and large pictures and everything. It, it just doesn't do it. It I guess I mean, because it does use that combination, that infrared and the actual camera to try, you know, doesn't let you fool it. Um, the fingerprint doesn't always do for me. So I just like straight up the codes. That's the code thing is great. And I'm not going to carry around NFC all the time. If they do eventually get the Google watches for working, hey, maybe that'll work. I don't always wear my watch and I don't always have my phone around. So it just depends on what I'm doing and things. I just like to open that door. So the keypad has probably been my go-to for the past few weeks on this. And I like the keypad. So there's that. And um, there's pretty much nothing else to say about the lock. Um, I just, I do like the ability. It does have that lithium ion rechargeable battery. I don't have to swap double A's into it over my quick set. So there's also that positive. So I don't know if I would kind of put this on the front door and then have to put the keypad to the side. I already have the doorbell that starts running into room issues. So do keep that on to mind when you're looking at wanting to buy one of these on what you have for mounting and everything. So that about do it for this one. I appreciate everybody for watching. And oh, if you really want to see some of the other outtake and weird stuff, I'm leaving all that at the end of the video, as mentioned before, because I really didn't know what direction I wanted to go with this. And SwitchBot did send some other stuff over, over with it. So hang out for that. And if you don't, yep, y'all just press all them buttons and y'all take care. Oh. So it works pretty decent. I think when the humidity level is kind of high, the thing won't work as well. Let's see. Yeah, about to try my index. Oh. So it does lock me out sometimes, but then the old code works. This is about what it looks like on the inside. You still can push the button. You can disable and enable that. So it just replaces the inside of the actual lock itself. So you're keeping the actual bolt that is yours. And then you also keep the key part that is yours. That way they're not entering the whole key market and trying to tackle that challenge of being picked or whatever. Then they can just blame the other door lock, I'm guessing. That's just my opinion. So but it works pretty well, especially if you're doing a renter, you know, and not, you, they're gonna get fussy for changing the whole lock. They just really won't know you've changed half of it probably. You can pull this off and then you can pop out the actual module. I do like that better that there isn't, you know, using double A's, you pop this open. So you need two hands to pull the orange thing down and then the module pops right out. And then there is a USB-C right there on the actual module itself to charge this thing up. I do like that feature. There is a backup battery in here. I think it even notifies you that if this battery is dead, that you may need to bring your key with you. As you may know, maybe don't know, but SwitchBot now has joined the Works With Home Assistant program. And yeah, I've started to look at some of the new stuff. So I figured, well, why it says it works with it now and is all golden and everything or platinum, whatever they're calling all the colors of the integration. We're just going to jump straight in. And um, yeah, I started playing with it. So this keeps it real as always. So let me get the stuff that is not SwitchBot out the way. So mainly what I wanted to cover was the issue is I haven't... I'd say old, but the Aquaria, Aquaria, however you want to say it, Zigbee, but it's kind of not Zigbee lock on my shop. And the wife always has issues with her code or her fingerprint don't register. So I thought, hey, this would be great is doing the vision deal right here with the SwitchBot lock. It's supposed to pick up like on her pretty face. So we'll see how that all works out or my ugly mug. And 
this has also a keypad. There's the NFC. I did try the NFC with like with the phone. It just won't add them, at least on the Android side, unfortunately. That would be really great. I even try it with the watches. Um, then it has the fingerprint. So we'll see how that works. I guess this is in the shop area, breezeway, whatever you want to call it for our garage deal. And it is like kind of a high moisture area. So maybe that's why the fingerprint doesn't work too well in the Akari one. They did send their regular little keypad as well. I've used this one on another lock. Um, I, what else? So the, we're looking at the, the lock ultra and where did I put the damn thing? Oh, here it is. So I went ahead and already like just put it through the paces. I wanted to see if it would pair straight into Home Assistant. And actually it does using Bluetooth proxy. Yes, you heard me correct. Using Bluetooth proxy. You do not need the hub. They sent the hub. You can pair the hub up. I don't know what I'm going to use the hub for. Um, not really sure just yet, but again, I didn't need the hub. I had the hub like powered off and I was still able to bring this into Home Assistant with Bluetooth proxy, which is pretty damn slick. The current deal with the Acario one, I have to have Acario's hub, then it has to go through sure matter. Yeah, it's telling me to put my face. Then you got to do like matter things and then hope that matter is going to work and stay commissioned which I have had issues with in Home Assistant. Please step a little closer to the device. Yes, I'll get closer to the device when we're ready to install it. I do have it on. Maybe I should turn that off. Back to the, where was I at? Oh, the Acaria with the Matter Hub. It's just an unnecessary piece that I don't really need on my network because I don't really have any other Acaria devices that are necessary to use with their hub it's for their whole ecosystem i mean their camera kind of sucked but um some of their other sensors work well and those just work thread and zigbee and well at least the newer ones do so they do have their button um i don't know why they sent that in the box but um that would be for an up and down thing i i, I don't know their garage door opener you're probably looking at it and going, that looks like a damn Shelly. It sure does look like a Shelly. Um, I thought this would also work with the security 2.0 protocol stuff. Apparently it does not. It's just a dry contact from what I saw. It said it needs additional hardware. So I think I'll just stick to the circuit setup stuff for that. Showed that in the previous video. So back down to where I'm eliminating a lot. We won't use this for right now, the regular door lock, the door keypad deal. We don't need all the boxes. You didn't need to hang around for all the dumb crap and crinkling of paper. Um, switch bot lock adapter. Um, I don't, I don't think I'll throw that just yet, but I don't think I need that because this is one of the weird things that I really don't like about the switch bot locks. And that is, you'll notice, there's no back to it. What happens is basically, you'll take apart half of your lock. You'll leave the front part, the key, and the bolt, and then you'll just take this piece and put this on the back of the door where you had, you know, the little turny thing, right? And this becomes a new turny thing. And then you just push the button. And it will turn the thing for you and it will turn, you push it, or you can actually still turn it manually if you like. Totally up to you, but of course, since it is encrypted Bluetooth, yes, hopefully all encrypted, that just don't give us warm and fuzzies, but it does turn the lock using Bluetooth, and then you can pair it up using the little keypad and do all the things. Plus you can control it in Home Assistant, see the state of the lock, change the state of the lock, and that's pretty cool. I like to see that all locally in Home Assistant without all the other nonsense hubs. And we're doing this with Bluetooth proxy. And what that is, is just a little ESP board, whether it be a Shelly plug or a POE one or whatever flavor of ESP32 with ESP Home on it, 
it's basically taking that Bluetooth traffic and putting it into Home Assistant all locally. Love to see that, that we don't need the hub for this. So enough of the rambling stuff. I'm going to go get this installed and then we'll just do a quick run through with it. I know they have a lot of great pictorial views and video stuff in the app on how to install it. So if you do get one, you just go through it like that. I'll show you some of the pictures and the processes if I can. But again, it's going to be different for everybody based on their locks.